Well, Reserve Bank Governor Glenn Stevens has delivered a parting shot to the nation's leaders. The outgoing governor has warned over complacency among policymakers bred by 25 years of economic growth. Speaking to the Australian Financial Review, Mr Stevens noted the record run of growth is not the natural state of affairs and called for action on budget repair. Just days before handing over the reins to Dr Philip Lowe, Glenn Stevens said inaction on the budget deficit is a vote for higher taxes, with taxpayers inevitably going to foot the bill. It was another day of steep falls on the local market. Investors disappointed by lack of further stimulus action from the European Central Bank. The ASX 200 gave up around 0.9%. Most sectors lower, but it was particularly ugly for banks and healthcare sectors. It's mixed across the region. The Hang Seng is powering ahead, though. And the Aussie dollar is little change, sitting around 76 and a half US cents. And Julia Lee from Bell Direct joins me now in the studio. Julia, the share market's marked, marked now its fourth consecutive week of losses. Is just this is this just the beginning of you know sour September? <laughs> Unfortunately, September is one of the worst months of the year. May and September are the worst months since the ASX 200 started. But having said that, we've now marked four consecutive weeks of decline. A lot of that is around disappointment that we aren't seeing more stimulus coming through from areas like the eurozone. But of of course, if we have a look at the market, it's been going up through this channel since February. And the good news is I think the selling is almost at an end. We're around a support area. Look, looking at the market this week, <laughs> Please <write. laughs> we were seeing some stocks doing extremely well and some stocks are receiving a boost still out of reporting season. So stocks like Sigma, Whitehaven Coal, as well as Austal, these are all companies that impressed during this reporting season. And they've all gained between 12 to 18 percent this week. So it's not all bad news stories. But unfortunately, on the large cap end, we are seeing decline. Let's talk more about Sigma, as you just mentioned. It continues to shine bright. It had another big jump today. What's behind that? I mean, Sigma a few years ago wasn't doing so well. This is a company that looks at wholesale to pharmaceuticals and chemists. And, you know, we were seeing these discount chemists popping up. A lot of them were going bankrupt, the smaller ones, and they were having a hard time getting their customers to pay their bills. Move forward to the current date, and we've seen not only a stellar result for the half year, but they've upgraded expectations for the full year. In terms of the chemists that they own and the pharmacies that they own, Guardian and Amcal, same store sales up by 7.2%. So strong growth there. Look, the government's been cutting spending in terms of the pharmaceutical benefit scheme, but what Sigma's managed to do is increase sales of non-pharmaceutical products. And then back in June, they launched this joint venture, a low-cost way to get into China through the Amcal brand, where it's selling things like Bellamy's baby formula and pawpaw ointment, which is going really well as well. So great day for Sigma, up 11% yesterday and up another 10%. And Origin CEO Grant King has stepped aside. Um, they They've replaced him with an internal candidate. Was that something that, that the market was expecting? It was expected, and I think this is a demonstration of a good succession plan. The market knew it was coming up. They knew that Grant King was looking to uh, retire after the APLNG project was up and running. And the internal candidate, ex-CFO, you know, head of the energy markets, energy section, and that division is responsible for about 80% of earnings. So a really good fit by Frank Calabria, and I think the market just demonstrated demonstrating confidence in that move and the stock was up about six percent. Of course he's going to have his own set of challenges. If we have a look at Origin Energy they've suspended their dividend because they're trying to pay down debt as quickly as possible and of course everything really just hinging on the oil price they wanted to go up. And very briefly I thought we'd been seen the re seen the end of reporting season but of course we've still got Maya next week. Now how is that expected to go? Look Maya is an interesting one and that's because it's the second most shorted stock mm. on the market. That means a lot of people are betting that the stock price will go down. 17% of its stock is shorted, which means if it comes out with a better than expected result, you can expect double digit gains in one day, probably over a number of days. Now the market's expecting to see a $72 million profit result. It's got its new Maya strategy, but we all know that winter was a bit slow to come this year. So I think apparel sales is going to be a difficult area and one to watch for Maya. Julie Lee, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Elise.